Now, uh, on the stat side of the advanced level, you get all these lovely probability distributions. So, for example, the binomial. Now, anything which is binomial, like, for example, drive, uh, passing the driver's test. Now, in England, the probability of a 17-year-old passing the driver's test is 0.47. Now, most parents think that's far too high. Uh, most kids think it's far too low. But anyway, we could, we could say, supposing we've got 30 people, and uh, let's, supposing we've got uh, 0.47. I have, haven't I? That would be interesting. Thank you very much. Let's get the focus back to here. So once again, I would get them to anticipate this distribution before they did it. So supposing we've got um, 30 people coming back all bushy-tailed saying they've, they've passed. So let's do probability calculations. Let's see how likely it is for 30 people uh, to get past here and there it is. Now that would be silly because there are only 30 people taking the test. So um, let's double click on that. And supposing we've got, say, 20 people passed. Now the probability of that is uh, only 2%, so that is under the magic 5%. 1 in 20 is reckoned to be the threshold between things which are likely to happen under normal circumstances and things which are sufficiently rare for us to take notice of them. But the great thing is this is a dynamic environment, so I can move this around and have a look at all the other possibilities. Um, you can even look at the, uh, at the end of the distribution, because it doesn't go further than 30. Only 30 people sat the thing, so you could have 30 people passing it. Um, the same will go for uh, looking at the normal distribution. So let's have a look at uh, the normal distribution. And let's supposing we're doing something like 100, a mean of 100, and a standard deviation of, let's just press the tab key, of uh, 15. Now that's the model they use for um, intelligence tests. It is the one um, that's been going for many, many years. Uh, in fact, if you give today's tests to your grandparents, they will all fail because the human race is getting better at doing these tests. So they have to keep re redoing it so that the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. So that's the way that works. Um, but it's quite an interesting distribution, this, because once again we can look at the animation of this and say, what would happen if we made me mu bigger than that? The whole thing's just going to march to the right, isn't it? It's just a simple translation. And what would happen if we change the standard deviation? Well, that's, that's going to be, um, if we make it smaller, it's still got to have a total area of 1, and so that's going to go up like that. And all the calculations you can do on this include the inverse calculations. So you can do, for example, your one-tailed, two-tailed tests, and there's your 10% region. So if you put another one on, you can then do your type 1 and type 2 errors.